We've known for some time, uh, thanks to the work of uh, public integrity, that uh, some senators, including Richard Burr, appeared to have used the private information that they had as uh, our country got closer and closer to experiencing the pandemic and used that to avoid losing a great deal of money on the stock market. That is what it appears happened. And it appears that more people are taking this seriously because we found out over the last day that FBI agents reportedly seized Senator Richard Burr's cell phone. Uh, he's the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee and they did that as part of an investigation into stock trades he made before the market plunged due to the coronavirus pandemic. They apparently seized his cell phone after uh, a search warrant. They showed up at his uh, residence. And we have a little bit more information about how they got to that point. We don't have a ton more information, but we do know that this is not something that the FBI just does willy-nilly, right, Michael? That they would do this to, you know, a, a powerful Republican right. senator. Like, that seems like the sort of thing that they would probably have to have a pr pretty high threshold uh, before they pull the trigger on that. Right. There are different thresholds, too. This is a, a really underratedly fascinating story uh, uh, because it's a political drama in a sense. Richard Burr is not well liked by the White House. They don't like the fact that as chair of the Intelligence Committee, he was a thorn in the side of the White House when investigating and you know assessing that, yes, Russia did try and hack into the 2016 election. There was meddling. The White House didn't like that narrative. And they've had it in a little bit for Richard Burr for quite a while. So he is the one, even though there were others like Kelly Loeffler, who, who he's the one that they actually executed a search warrant on. The fact that they had a search warrant at the Justice Department, the FBI, for that means, to me anyway, I'm reading into wondering whether or not the president or the White House had influenced that. The fact that Chuck Schumer wasn't saying he should step aside as intelligence chair tells me that they're happy that this thorn in the side of the president is at the intelligence chair, especially when you have Obamagate being whispered about in the House. Then you move to the fact that he's stepping aside now. McConnell's saying, all right, yes. that until this until this investigation is over with, he is going to be uh, sidelined as chairman of the Intelligence Committee. It all fits a narrative that the White House doesn't like Richard Burr. They don't care that much about Richard Burr. He's not someone they're investing in right now. Mm -hmm. To me, uh, it's a, it's a fascinating, it goes deeper than what Richard Burr did, egregious and terrible. Uh, the, 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 it's clear that there was a connection between he and his brother-in-law, the, the fact that they sold their stocks at the same time, just ahead of the coronavirus, just after he had secret intelligence briefings. But the point that they're going after this guy and not anybody else tells me there's more to the story. Yeah. Uh, so I would still be, if I was Kelly Loeffler, I'd probably, I'd be thinking a little bit about potentially what might happen. But um, yeah, no, you, you bring up a good point. Um, you know, th this just randomly occurs to me. It probably has absolutely nothing. But do you think that if there is going to be a continuing battle over what happens to Michael Flynn, that the fact that he's the chair of the Intelligence Committee, does, do you think that that plays any role or is that just totally disconnected? I don't because I think their work is done there. I think it goes yeah. to any, if there's any problem with it, it would go to the Judiciary Committee anyway, uh, mm -hmm. because it's a miscarriage of justice. But I, I think it's going to be handled in the courts and not in Congress. I mean, okay. for now. Well, so, thank you for it, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for mentioning uh, that he is being sidelined as chair. Uh, I don't think as of when we're talking, they know for sure who's going to take his place. But I did I did see that it might be Rubio that might actually take over. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Um, what we do know, though, is the uh, FBI apparently served a warrant to Apple to get information from Burr's iCloud account, according to the Times, citing an unnamed law enforcement official. The data that the FBI agents got from Apple was then used as part of the evidence needed to obtain a warrant for Burr's phone. And in case you have not been following this or watching the show for the past couple of months, Burr sold off between $628,000 and $1.72 million of his holdings on February 13th and 33 separate transactions. This is from uh, ProPublica. And so, again, Again, he's not the only one, perhaps not even the most egregious, although he's right up there. Um, and we'll have to see. And just um, sort of like a, for a, a, an interesting note is that uh, when the Stock uh, Act was passed, which effectively made the sort of thing that he's being alleged to have done illegal, um, only three senators voted against it, and he was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> a wise choice on his part, but unfortunately he didn't learn anything by the fact that it's still passed anyway. Um, just out of curiosity, there's like no chance. Michael, do you know either of the other two? Uh, who who, who voted, voted against, against it? 
Oh, wow. Um, uh, no, I, uh, I will say that the other two, you say there's no chance. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't have even asked anyone else. I thought you have the oh, only oh, chance uh, of knowing any. Yeah, no, I mean, my guess is there would be uh, uh, Rand Paul and Mike Lee. Those are both great guesses, but no, it's uh, Bingaman and Coburn. Oh, God. Yeah, it was that Congress. That's right. And Jeff Bingaman didn't like the way that it was debated. And that's why he voted against it. Former senator from New Mexico. And Coburn just passed away, Tom Coburn. Yeah. Uh, well, you uh, didn't the, get either, the, uh, but know, your explanation right. afterwards worth a few points at the very least. Well, uh, but but here's the other part of this is, uh, you know, the, the politics. I was talking to Emma Viglund about this today by a text because she sent a text out saying how weak it was of Chuck Schumer to not call for his stepping aside. I actually thought it was the opposite. I thought, you know, it wasn't strength. It was just smart. I thought it was clever because they want to see the Republicans crumble on their own. And it's important, too, because they know that the White House isn't happy about this. The other side of it is why not go after Loeffler? Well, the, the Democrats want Loeffler to get the nomination against Doug Collins because they think they have a better shot of beating her in Georgia. And that opens up lots of different conversations, mm. everything from who could be vice presidential nominee down to who's going to run the Senate next time. So it's all yeah. it's all interesting conversation. Well, we'll be watching. I mean, we I, I, look, I can only speak for myself, but I've wanted some consequences for this and, and not just like individual criminal consequences, because it yeah. seems horrible to uh, be trying to save yourself money while publicly saying hey, we got this. Nobody worry about anything. Um, but also legislative consequences. I think the Stock Act obviously needs to be massively strengthened. I don't think that they should be allowed to own individual stocks or have any direct control over their trading. When they when they can have an effect on the markets, an obvious, direct, predictable effect on the markets, positive or negative, they should not be in a position to benefit financially off of that. There might be some individuals in this country who are so financially selfless that they would think about the country and not their stock portfolio. Those sorts of people, in my experience, don't tend to run for office. So I don't trust no. I don't trust them to own stocks personally. What do you think of blind trust, though? Do you think that that's... Uh, yeah, potentially. That's, yeah. Uh, look, I think if, that if that's, that's what we could get, then I would be happy with that. Yeah, I think that that's, that should be the law and that should be what it is. I also think that, you know, you prevent some people who would probably be pretty good at running for office who, uh, you know, if they couldn't invest at all, uh, any of their savings, any of their money that they've worked for in, in any kind of stock market. But I do think the blind trust is is obviously something that should happen and they should never be allowed to, to even know who's controlling it uh, personally, just sort exactly. of hand it over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I don't remember so which not, one it not was. Not anybody in the family either. A totally yes. separate from a family member. Oh, I'm giving this to my brother. He handles all my stuff. No, that doesn't matter. So you're not satisfied with like your your two idiot sons running your business while you're president or anything? I only have one idiot son. I'm talking so about it, Trump, obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> not you. I'm not kidding. insulting your I'm awesome kidding. kid. I know. I anyway. Um, uh, yes, no, I know what you were saying. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, so let's let's see what happens. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.